Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamerguru.com. Today I'm working in Finish Designer to create buttons. I will be using basic shapes, gradients, effects and textures. Why would I choose buttons? The reason is rather simple. They are easy to create. It's a combination of circles. I start with the bigger circle, scale it down, duplicate the smaller one align the two to the larger one with the snapping on, then I combine all three as a compound. In order for the smaller circles to actually cut holes, I need to set them to subtract. I choose a compound because it allows me to keep editing. I can quickly turn the two holes into four by duplicating the two smaller circles in my compound group. Creating the basic shape was easy. Let's take this one and give it some color and basic shading. I give it a red fill. I start with the darker color and add a lighter shape on top. In this case, another circle. The problem with compound groups is they can't act as clipping masks. So for the highlight to work and not cover up the holes, it needs to go inside. I convert the compound group into a curve that now can hold a lighter color of the circle and I combine two more for the sickle shape that is the highlight. Repeat that process, two circles in a darker color combined as a compound, make another sickle shape for the indent and that indent would have a highlight on the opposite side. The holes would show some sort of highlight. As long as I work within the clipping mask, anything I create will be trimmed by the shape of the curve. I duplicate the curve, delete the content inside, give it a plain black color and lower the opacity for drop shadow. Let's polish this some more by adding effects. I add a Gaussian blur to the drop shadow as well as to the shapes inside. You can select multiple objects and assign the same effects to them. The whole button appears rounder and smoother. By duplicating the four highlights of the holes and giving them a darker tint, I can add more depth to the holes. I want to scale the holes. I can't do that as I did before because it's no longer a compound. I have to manipulate the nodes. I do that by turning on the transform mode, which allows me to select multiple nodes and scale, rotate and skew them together. Let's change the color and add a gradient to the design. I will turn this one into a brownish orange tone. Go lighter on the highlights and set them to a light yellow and then change the layer blend mode to overlay, which mixes the colors nicely. I use the transparency tool to fade the highlights I add circles with a Gaussian blur to add shine to the material. Next I add the gradient to the main curve going from the darker brown to a lighter orangey tone. I add a few stops to the gradient changing the lightness and making it look a little bit more shiny by adding lighter tones. Seeing I forgot to alter the drop shadow shape, let's remove that and add an outer shadow effect instead. Now I just have that one curve with its content. It's easy to manipulate by adding, for example, a HSL adjustment layer, which allows me to change the color or take out the saturation. By reducing the saturation shift to minus 100%, I have no color left, just grayscale. I take out all the shading shapes and will replace them with effects. I start by adding a bevel effect, set it to inner, and change the profiles. Of course, you can alter the curve and create your own profile, even though a finish designer limits the slider bars, you can always add a higher value by putting the numbers straight into the field. For the indent in this button, I want to use an inner shadow. The inner shadow requires a fill. I can copy the gradient from the main curve 
to that new circle by copying and pasting the style. I can adjust the gradient, adding the HSL layer to it. It's all a little too complicated. When I add the inner shadow, adjust the radius and the offset, I have my indent, but it's hard to manipulate. It will be a lot easier just adding a white fill to my circle and adjusting the layer blend mode to multiply. The multiply will just show the darker colors, erasing the white. For the highlight on the other side, there is an inner glow. Let's try that one. It does not give me that many options. It glows constantly from all sides. So let's turn that into an inner shadow as well. I can define the colors of the shadow. So I turn it to white and adjust the blend mode to screen or add. It adds the white to the design. And finally, I can add a Gaussian blur to both the highlight and the shadow to make it smoother. The advantage of the effects is they react with any changes I make to the color, the gradient, or in the adjustment layer if I make the button brighter. To increase the metal appearance of this button, I add more shapes to define the shine. Two circles with a blur and transparency on either side, as well as highlight shapes and some stars for sparkles will do the trick. Textures are a great way to alter the material of an object. I remove the shading shapes, keep the two highlights inside and alter the gradient a little bit. I want to use more muted colors to not interfere too much with the texture. The highlight shapes are set to overlay to mix with the colors I intend to put in. They appear more orangey yellow now than the white before. I bring in a photo. This one was a photo I took at the beach of some granite with sand. And play around with the layer blend modes. Find one that matches what would look interesting, what you have in mind with the design. Play around. I think I like the glow, so I use that one, reduce the opacity to 50%. I had another photo on top. This one is some dirt on the pavement. I set it to difference, which alters the whole look, giving it a rusty, worn feeling. I adjust the curve of this one to make the lights lighter and the dark darker, adjust the opacity and change the properties of the bevel. As you can see, the design reacts instantly to those changes. Keeping that in mind, maybe it's easier to take the indent and make it just a single shape. I add an inner bevel, set it to invert, which makes it an indentation. The advantage of using effects is their consistency. The light stays where it is. If I rotate the button now, the light stays. If I scale it and have the scale with object on, the button scales without problem. The effect scales with it. Here are some examples of the buttons on a background. I use the checkered pattern and the embroidery stitches from earlier videos. There is a very simple button with flat colors, no gradients. I used three strokes layered on top of each other for the thread. One has 50% opacity. The other two have varying stroke width. The red one has some shading gradients in the red, the dark background, as well as a transparency in the highlights.
The next one is a little bit more complex. I use the bevel on a different button shape, the embroidery brush for the thread and an indent on the text and the dots. And the last one has bevel, an indent, and a material. The variations are nearly endless. As with most projects, play around, use simple shapes, and have fun adding to it as you get more comfortable with the tools you are using. Just keep the level of detail in mind. Lastly, I have an illustration where I put the buttons into a surrounding that matches, working with blurred shapes, gradients. This one has a grunge texture on top of the gradients, uses the embroidery brushes and the fur brushes, as well as a lot of gradients, blurs and altered blend modes. For the buttons in this video, I used basic shapes, gradients, effects, mainly the bevel and the drop shadow, as well as texture images to create variations on a rather simple item. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, tick on the notification icon, leave a like and a comment in the section below to let me know what you want to see on my channel and I will see you again soon.